Hello, my friends. My name is Darren Gertis. Today is March 26, 2024, and this is a daily brief. So I'm looking at the losses of the Russian occupiers in Ukraine, 770 off the battlefield, only six tanks, 24 armored combat vehicles, 44 vehicles and fuel tanks. So it hasn't stopped, but it's slowed down a little bit, it seems. Um, that doesn't mean that uh, everything's you know, hunky dory, it just means it's not as intense as it was. In other places, you'll see things like the Ukrainian air defense eliminated 12 enemy Shahids out of 12, and you get this idea like, well, they're doing great, but slow down, you got to get the complete picture. Russia also launches missiles on attack on Kyiv for the third time in five days. Uh, Russia launched a missile attack, 10 people are injured um, as Moscow ramps up this aerial assault. If you look at the big picture, 300 missiles and drones have been fired at cities across Ukraine over the past seven days. So I did the math on that. That's that's uh, 1.8 either missile or drone or some kind of uh, aerial projectile every hour over seven days. That that's a lot. It, it's I mean it's it's been heating up in many ways. Uh, Ukraine says it hit a warship that it that Russia took from it in 2014 with a missile. And this is a ship, the Konstantin Olshansky. Uh, a little bit more about this. This is a ship that belonged to Ukraine. It was captured by the Russian occupiers in 2014. For nine years, it stood in Sevastopol Bay. It was disassembled for spare parts. And in the 10th year, they realized that they were running out of large landing ships. And it was decided to restore it. Uh, during the year, it was restored, but the purpose of these works was to commit forgery and report to management that they had restored one of their previously damaged large landing ships. Like, there is still that kind of corruption going on in Russia. It was decided to hit this ship with the Neptune. The defeat was inflicted. The damage is being clarified. But we don't know exactly uh, how much damage it was. This is another picture of the ship of the Konstantin Olshansky. Um, and then, so this I thought was interesting. The defense forces successfully struck the reconnaissance ship Ivan Kurz and the large landing ship Konstantin Olshansky. This is updated information. As we reported before during the attack, large landing ships Yamal and Azov were also damaged. Now Yamal was damaged pretty well and we know that. Uh, Azov, we don't know. Oh, uh, the even Ivan Kurz was another ship that we were like, was it hit or wasn't it hit? It was attacked, but we don't know the state of whether it was, I, I don't believe it was sunk, but the, the state of its damage. And this Konstantin Olshansky is the latest, uh, greatest hit. Okay. Um, now I saw this and I thought, okay, well, this is really interesting. Some people really think like this, like because we're giving to Ukraine, these bad things are happening, but they're not really related. Today, we blame Ukraine for a huge cargo ship colliding with a bridge. I don't know why you would blame Ukraine because in Maryland, um, so this is at the uh, uh, Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, Maryland, in the United States. Um, if you're not familiar with the geography of the United States, there's Virginia and Maryland, and right in between is Washington, D.C. Um, the, sh the government is busy sending money to fund wars when our infrastructure is crap. Prayers to everyone affected by this tragedy. Uh, the news is a ship collides with the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, causing it to collapse. I, it's not related. I mean, like, so here's actually the video of this. I've been over that bridge many times. Um, this is what happened. Look at the ship hitting the the uh, support, and that's a bad thing because that's not supposed to be, yeah. And this is a huge bridge. That's a huge cargo ship, and the huge bridge, the span, it just it wasn't meant to take that kind of abuse, right? Yeah, that, that's a bad thing. But of course, uh, they, they're blaming Ukraine for that for some reason. I, it has nothing to do with it. Of course, Putin might blame Ukraine for that. But OK, that's a whole different story. Ukraine receives, in good news, $880 million from the IMF, according to uh, Shmehal. And this, I thought, was really, really interesting. They're uh, 3D printing schools in a war zone because it's there's you can do it quickly and cost effectively if you do it right. And I just thought, like, wow, look at that. They, they bring these uh, materials around to 3D print. And the curves are not an issue. Like, uh, curved buildings would be really hard to do if you're doing it by hand, but not when you're 3D printing. 
And like, <laughs> like that's a really interesting setup. Now, it's something that uh, you'll probably see more of in Ukraine as, as rebuilding efforts continue, but they can get these things constructed pretty quickly. And that's what the school building looks like because a school building was devastated just yards from there. Okay, that's all that I have. I just thought I'd end on a more positive note here, uh, given everything that's been going on. Thank you for the time. Thank you for the likes, the shares, the subscribes, and the coffees. And thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.